uh, factoring by decomposition. So this is a style of factoring where we focus on uh, factors of the a and c value in standard form that have to add up to the b term. And then we, the reason they use this word decomposition is because you decompose that b term, okay? So I'll, I'll, I'll draw a reference to them again just so you know them. Uh, at this point, I think you're pretty good with it. This is the standard form. And in standard form, we're usually written as y is equal to ax squared plus b at x plus c. Our c value in this one happens to be 10. Our b value in this one happens to be positive 17. And our a value happens to be positive 3. In decomposition, we look for um, two factors, so two values that multiply to whatever a times c happen to be. And in this case, a times c happens to be uh, 30. It's 10 times 3. And we also look, these same two factors will also equal to whatever our b value happens to be. And b in this case is 17. Like we've done before, we can write factors of 30. Um, top of my head. I think 15 and 2 are going to work out really nicely. Uh, 15 times 2 gives you 30, and 15 plus 2 gives you 17. So those two check off the box. Next, what we're going to do is essentially the idea is that, hey, 17 is equal to 15 plus 2. So think about this B value here, okay? 17 is equal to 15 plus 2. So instead of writing in, and we'll write those same three values before, you know, we still had the 3 here. The 3 was our A value, X squared, okay? But instead of writing 17 for B, we are splitting it. And now we're splitting it into positive 15X plus 2X. So 15X plus 2X is actually equal to 17. But instead of representing it as a simplified number, we've decomposed it into two numbers. And this allows us to set up a scenario where we're factoring or common factoring by groups, okay? And the idea is, think of it like we have two sets of groups. There are now four terms in here. So this is term one, term two, term three, term four. And think, you know, of terms one and two as being a little special group and terms three and four as being a special group. We could technically, you know, I could have put the two X first and the 15 X, we'll still come to the exact same answer. And um, in mathematics, if you write three horizontal lines, uh, that means an equivalent statement. I'm gonna rewrite the equivalent statement on the side just to prove this. Um, 2X plus 15X plus 10, okay? All I've done is um, term two, I've made it like term three in this case, and term three I've made into term two. So we'll, we'll do them simultaneously, okay? y is equal to, we need to find a common factor of the first two terms. Um, there's an x in both of those, so we know x is coming out. And there's also, I usually do this in red, um, 3. So I can actually divide both of these by 3x, okay? So 3x is the common factor from this group. And then whatever's left when we divide 3x squared divided by 3x actually just leaves you with x, okay? And 15x divided by 3x just leaves you with 5 when you divide. Of these two values, um, there isn't a variable in both, so we can't common factor out a variable, but the coefficient of two, that's a, um, a factor of both of them. So positive two is gonna come out, and two x divide two gives you just x, and 10 divide two gives you just five, okay? So we've already set up that old scenario we've looked at before, where we have two sets of brackets that are the same, we're gonna common factor them out, and we're just gonna be left um, with the answer at the end. Um, you know what, I'll do that right now, and then I'll, we'll jump over to the right to show how we get to the same answer. These two things are the same, so honestly, think of it like we're common factoring out x plus 5, x plus 5. Another way to do it is like to put a let statement and replace it with like a y, common factor that out if it's simpler for you. But you can just really jump to this next step. You don't have to do improve all those steps. We've common factored x plus 5, and when we take those out, we're left with 3x and plus two. And this is our factored form of this standard form. Now on the right hand side where I, I changed the um, positions, we'll do the exact same thing. Um, the next step here is to find common factors of the first two pair and the second pair. 
Well, there isn't a coefficient other than one. We don't really need to divide by one, but I can divide both of these by x. So I'm actually gonna take x out of both of those, okay? y is equal to x is the common factor. And we have 3x, divide, 3x squared divide x actually just leaves you with 3x. And positive 2x divide x just leaves you with 2, okay? And in the other values, I can take 5 out. 5 becomes the common factor, so we say plus 5. I don't know if you're seeing it yet. 15x divide 5 will give you 3x, and 10 divide 5 will give you 2. We've set up an exactly the same type of scenario, except the value we're going to common factor out is actually this little bracket here. So we're going to end up common factoring out this, and which is what we had left over. And instead, what we common factored the first time, that's actually going to be what's left over, okay? Same idea. We common factor out the 3x plus 2 and 3x plus 2, okay? And again, you don't have to show that common factoring step. You can kind of just jump to the last thing here. Because we common factored out 3x plus 2, I write it in red just to show that. And what's left over would be in the other bracket. Well, we have an x and we have positive 5. And because of that associative property of multiplication, it doesn't matter the order of the brackets. Um, they both end up being the same thing. So when you decompose, it doesn't actually matter what value you put first or second. You'll end up at the exact same answer 